All right, this video is going to be about pooled variants. Ah, not that kind of pool. But pooled variants in statistics basically means combined variants from all the different groups, right? So remember, variance is a measure of central tendency. There's this uh, long, ugly formula where you would subtract each individual piece of data from the group, mean, square it, divide by everything, blah, 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 blah. But all you need to know is variance is measures the spread of the data away from the group mean. Okay, so a pooled variance is we're going to take all the different group means and we're going to we're going to pool them. But a lot of times you're going to get stuff like this. Here's an example. You're going to get two groups. Group 1, there's the sample size, there's the variance, right? Remember, little s squared means variance because the this that's a uh, English letter, we're talking about a sample. Don't overly worry about the difference between a sample and a population. I'll go over it here in a second. Uh, but that's group one. And here's group two. Sample size a little bit smaller. Standard EVI. I'm sorry. The variance is a little bit smaller. So there is a big, ugly formula. And we're pretending we're going to run an independent t-test. That's probably the only time I can think of when you would need to calculate pooled variance by hand. Uh, there might be a few others, but the independent t-test... Because a lot of times, that's all you get, right? You just get the two pieces of data, and you don't get anything else. So because you don't have the data in front of you, there's no way that you can run this all through the same program and get the variance at once. Okay, so back to our little thing there, independent t-test. So remember, S squared means variance, and because it's an English letter S, that means it's from a sample, and that means variance. So remember, you take the square root of the variance, you get the standard deviation. But that's not what this video is not about, okay? So that little P down here stands for pooled variance. So S sub P raised to the 2, that is pooled variance. Pooled. Ah. And there's that big ugly formula I was promising you. So remember, N1 is the sample size of group 1. N2 is the sample size from group 2. S squared 1 is the variance of group 1. S squared 2, sub 2, is the variance of the second group, right? And we're just going to plug and chug. So there's our data. Don't forget. So 50 and 10, 40 and 8. I tried to pick numbers that are going to be easy to use. And we're simply going to substitute them into the numbers here. All right, so sample 1 is 50. Sample 2 is 40. So we're going to do all those. I'm going to do those calculations first. So 50 minus 1, I think I can do that one in my head. And 40 minus 1 turns into, bam, 49 and 39. And on the bottom, 50 plus 40 is 90 minus 2 is 88. Okay, that was easy. So now we substitute in the variance for the first group. I think that was 10. Variance for the second group, I think that was 8. We're not going to square them. They've already been squared, okay? Don't make that mistake. And we're going to multiply them out. We're going to add them up. And we're going to divide. Boom. That is the pooled variance for these two. So a real fast shortcut. It's not 100% accurate. Let me find the data on there. Hold on a second. So a real fast shortcut is to simply add these two together and take the average. So if we added... 10 plus 8, that's 18. Divide by 2, that's 9. So that's not exact, though. That's not, a, you know, that's not scientifically perfect. But it's pretty darn close. So again, a good rule of thumb is simply add up the two variances, divide by 2. And so we would have gotten 18 divided by 2 is 9. And in real life, it was 9.114. So it was really, really close. But that's it. I hope it helps. MGZ out.